Okay, I had a few mistakes I had to correct. That's uh, why it took so long. That and I just kind of took a break. But uh, what I'm going to do now is I've cut the pieces out. I've got both fuselage sides cut out and we're going to lay up the carbon doublers. Now, <clears throat> the reason why it took so long is I made the first cut and I didn't like the angle of the cowl line. This piece here is kind of important that you have exactly perfect because you want the needle valve to come out at that uh, particular spot. And this has this is a muffler filler here, as opposed to the other side, which is just straight across. So now I've laid laid this out, and I've got X's on the sides where the glue is going to go. We're going to mix up some Z epoxy, and uh, we won't be running the video while the Z epoxy is drying. So this will probably be the last video of the day, but we're going to mix up probably an ounce of z epoxy. So that should be enough, maybe a little more. We want a good, a good solid bond on this. And this will take a few hours to dry, so I probably should have done this before I started doing my other things. But we're just a week and a day into this project now. And uh, the wing's all done. Elevator stabilizer is done. We're carrying that over from before. And we had to remake the fuselage because I changed the numbers on the airplane. So now we're going to paint on the Z epoxy on the doublers, both sides. I'm using a hard eighth inch balsa wood for a doubler and the carbon fiber mat. So now what I do, so I get uh, exactly where it needs to come out at, is I just set it on here, and we're going to get a, a fingerprint of where some more glue's got to go, so it goes all the way back to there. The nice thing about z epoxy is that you can sand it. It's hard. It dries hard. Where epoxy is like rubber. You never can make a nice joint at at the uh, where the spinner is sanded to shape because of the uh, consistency of the epoxy. But z epoxy is sandable, so I like that. Now we lay the mat down over it. And put a little more epoxy on this side. It doesn't really much matter how much glue you get up here because this is the short end. <laughs> 
A lot of guys end up adding nose weight anyway, but I try to make everything as light as possible. Okay, so now I'm going to cut off the excess uh, mat. Nice thing about z epoxy, it's got more than a five minute working time. I haven't cut the uh, wing opening yet in this other fuselage side, and I probably should have, but it won't matter. Okay, we got that cleaned up. Set this aside. Make sure that it's on there perfectly square. Looks good. Make sure that we have the right side because <laughs> I have glued the doublers on the wrong sides before and we'll do the other one now I think that in order to build fast if you can build at half an hour at a time or an hour at a time or whatever you need to get into a the rhythm of I'm going to build between five and six o'clock at night and that's all I'm going to do between five and six o'clock at night and do it every night and uh, at, at that rate it'll take you a year to build an airplane if you only work an hour a day but uh, Two airplanes, you could have two hours a day. You could have an airplane done in six months. The woodwork itself is not is not where the time is at. The time is in the finish. If you want a good finish, you're going to have to spend the time. There just there's not any other way around it. So, make sure that you cover the whole thing. And we didn't use all the epoxy, but I, would, I mixed up more just in case, because it's really hard to tell how much it's going to take to cover something. The nice thing about these... Uh, mistakes or what have you that I made in the angle is that I glued it back together, seed, and that other, another piece on, corrected the angle, and after this nose is put together and I go ahead and I, I usually been using uh, just half ounce cloth and, and z epoxy on the nose, you won't be able to tell where that line was because it will finish off perfectly. Because you can barely see it in the wood, to be honest with you. Push it down real good. Make sure that it's square. Let's cut off the excess. We're done with the epoxy. I wish it was something else I had ready to go. In the interim, we can go ahead and make a uh, nose ring. And 
Now Wendy, he likes to make nose ring out of 16th inch plywood where he glues two pieces of 16th together. Well, unfortunately, I don't have that. I don't have any 16th, but I do have enough 8th inch plywood that we can use that. I have to get the firewall glued on yet. We're going to go ahead and tack this with some CA to hold it square while I put the glass and the weight on it. Okay, now that, that piece is held together, tacked together straight. This piece was already pretty square. Of course, when this dries, I'll hit it with a sanding block to make these edges perfect. We like perfect. piece of wax paper. Okay. We definitely don't want this to stick to the table. Nor do we want it to stick to the piece of glass, so add another piece on there. piece of glass, but this will have to do. So in a few hours we'll come back, we'll pick that up, we'll glue the crutch on, and I'll lay the fuselage out. And uh, before the day's up we should have uh, a fuselage. It's the end of the day now, but I'll, I'll get a little farther today, so we'll see you in a bit. Okay, this morning <clears throat> we're going to attach the crutch to the fuselage. I'm going to do that. 
I mean, it's pretty straightforward and basic. That's why I don't, uh, you know, show every step or whatever. But I'm going to mix up some epoxy. The nose here is a spot where you want to use an ample amount of epoxy. You don't want to you don't want to skimp in the nose here. <clears throat> I've already marked the fuselage where the bulkhead has to go. There's a line here. So there's not going to be any question of when I set it down or whatever. Building model airplanes is a lot of one chance. I mean, if you mess this up right here, you're kind of screwed. <laughs> Paint it on the uh, bearers, make sure you get plenty on there. Make sure you get the firewall glued. We're going to wipe off any excess that happens to, uh, to fall down in it. Make sure it's laying on the bench. Line it up. Hold it in. And we'll do the other side. And I put a clamp on the firewall to hold it all together. Check the tail post, make sure that mates perfectly. And it does. Another clamp up here on the front. When you're using these clamps, you don't want to uh, clamp it so tight you distort things. You just want to make sure that it's down on there good. Wipe off any excess that happened to mush out.
And that's it. Let it dry. We'll be back when it's dry. Okay, there was some footage that I had to delete because I had the TV on in the background and YouTube will take down my whole channel if I play copyrighted material. But anyway, I showed you that I was, uh, you know, how to attach a fuselage sides. And the, other, the, the footage that I lost was the figuring out of this block. I took the block from the other fuselage and it wasn't quite wide enough and it was warped. So I grafted two blocks together. Now that's something I don't really like to do, uh, but we're going to use fiberglass cloth on it so it should be all right. And it will be under the canopy. So I'll work it into that. So I've mounted the motor and I've cut uh, the nose ring. I drilled an eighth inch hole because that's where the pin's going to be to hold the cowl on. And uh, make, making sure that you got even uh, space between the spinner back plate all the way around. I do have a tool that uh, I bought from Jim Lee down in the car. And uh, later on, I'll go down there and grab that, and we'll sand that so it's absolutely perfect. But uh, I don't know whether I stated whether the footage was lost where I added the stringers. And what I'm going to be doing now is measuring and cutting the three bulkheads that go in here, and uh, we'll get those attached. So. What we're going to do is we're make, basically making a big block. We're going to carve and sand to shape. So I need to get all the parts together before we go any farther. So we'll be back in a short. When I get caught up and I get all the, uh, the blocks put on this uh, fuselage for the cowl and uh, the bottom block, thinking that we're going to be going like so. Maybe if I do it this way. Yeah, I'll probably do it this way. That way we don't have any big breaks in, in the uh, piece lodge. I'm also going to be putting a tank floor uh, upper in this. Actually it's a bottom, but we're going to put an upper in this so that you can't see the tank because on the uh, outlets because I'm going to do a little different type exhausting for the cooling air. Because I really I really want to make this airplane outstanding. And I saw a lot of good stuff after that. A lot of good builders. A lot of good builders at the Nats. And that's one thing I know that I can do as well as anybody is build them. Can't fly them that great. I <laughs> gotta practice. So we'll be back in a short and uh, continue on. So see you in a bit. Well, we put the uh, fuselage together. I don't know how much tape was lost. But uh, we're gonna we're working on carving the uh, nose block now. Oh, I remember now. I uh, had a problem with the wood. So what I opted to do was graft two pieces together. Uh, we're about I don't know 10, 11 days in, no, 13 days in, I think. I'll have to look at the calendar. But this airplane was started right after the Nats. And uh, what I'm doing now is kind of shaping the nose block down. And that's what I'm going to be working on today.
I use a <clears throat> various things for shaping. I really like my Hobbyco razor plane. Now they they made a real good razor plane that used a double-edged razor blade, and I really like those, but I haven't been able to find one. They're, they were blue metal, and I haven't seen those in 40 years. But uh, this Hobbyco uh, plane works just as well. And the trick to a plane is try not to set the blade so that it takes, you know, a sixteenth of an inch off. You want to set it so it takes only a few thousands off. Then it won't load, it won't uh, grab, and you have more control of it. And if you notice here, this, this block started as a square block just a few strokes ago. We, we cut, uh, you know, quite a bit off of the long blade. And then we're roughing it to shape. And how I get that real nice free flowing shape on the nose is we hold up the spinner to the nose block and we get kind of an approximation how much what is going to have to be the curve so I start taking that down in big chunks on this then as I get closer for a final shape, we'll go ahead and mount the spinner on the nose ring so I can blend that in perfectly. Because the most focal part, part of your airplane is the nose. That's what people are going to see the most. I get it close, I sand it, I look at it, it's not quite right, then I go back and sand it some more. It, all these shapes that I get on these airplanes are sanded in several increments. If it doesn't look right, re-sand it. Just try not to take too much off so you, you can't re-sand it. That's nowhere near enough. It's going to have to taper way back to here. So, we'll get the plane out. We cut, cut a large portion of it off there. set up to only cut maybe ten thousandths at a time off. And that's plenty. Now we almost have the correct uh, correct drop in this.
We're just roughing the shape in right now. The final shape will be achieved when the spinner is mounted. And the top blocks finished glued on. You just kind of got to get an approximation. Oh boy. I'm going to cut the bunch off here. Ted, I sure hope you're, Ted Winterman, I sure hope you're watching this. I'm showing you how not to have a baseball bat nose. See what a little sandpaper does for it. This is 80 grit, and if it doesn't sand real good with 80, I'll go to 30. And that looks like what it. No, it's gonna sand with 80. That way, we're not sanding any flaps into the nose. Compliments I got at the Nats, one of the things that made me feel real good was one of the Heinz brothers, Samantha's uh, uncle, said to me, he said, you know, I build some nice airplanes, and the reason why I do it, he flies speed, and the reason why he does it is because he can't win <laughs> against Joey and against them other guys in speed, but his airplanes look better. And he said the reason why he was able to do it is because I told him he could do anything. And that's something that my father told me. And believe me, if, if you set your mind to it, you can do this. You have to be open and willing to learn. God 
gave you two ears and one mouth, there's got to be a reason for it. So you listen twice as much as you talk. Anyway, you see we're we're getting close to the to the shape that we wanted from a square block, and it we've come a long ways. And like I said in the beginning of this video, it will take probably four or five sandings to get the exact shape I want because. We're getting it close here so that I can pry it off, hollow it out, and finish up the shape after it's mounted and completely on. Now what's happened is, is the, uh, the tack that I put on the nose ring there has come loose. So we'll put another one on there. Because if you let it, if you sand it without it being, you know, tacked down, it'll be too short. You want good solid joint. I'm only showing this sanding on camera for guys like Shug Emery and you know there's there was a few of you that wanted to see the sanding. Sanding is an art. It takes uh, a little while to master it but anybody can do it. Okay, so now we have to blend it into this other block. So we'll come back with a knife and small shavings. You could ruin the whole model right here and go, wow, now I gotta start again. sand in a cross hatch from the center line down to the side and that way it will be symmetrical. And in order to be a nice looking nose it has to taper all the way back. You can't just have it tapered two inches from the spinner. That would look ridiculous. And you don't want a flat up here, so you wanna you wanna bring that roundness all the way up to the center, all the way back to the uh, canopy. This will probably be one of the most boring videos that I've made because of all this sanding. I will change the angle of the camera right now so you can get a better idea of how I'm sanding it. So I'll be back in a okay. second. I've removed the I moved the camera, repositioned it. And we're gonna show you how I how I sand up close. 
and I always use a block and you always want to go in this direction. You don't really want to go back and forth like this because that, what that does is sand flats into the nose. And I can see that from across the field. And you kind of, you know, I, I do on occasion sand without a block. But you kind of want to refrain from that. Because that does, that also gets you flat. Now you notice how we're going one way, we're going to sand in the other direction now. Right from the top center line down. Now we have a spot right here. Let me see if I can focus in on that. We have a spot right here where it doesn't blend. So what I do is I take the roll of sandpaper and I kind of blend it in because that's our that's our dashboard, so to speak. And that's where I join the two different blocks together, which will be under the canopy. Now I can already see that there's a high spot there, so we're going to have to sand that down. And you're not going to get it the first time, so don't even try it. Sand on a little while and then go do something else and then come back to it. Now we really haven't worked very hard on this airplane because I'm in no rush and I have some other things going on. I don't know, but I have put some time in it, but as you can see, by just uh, this run of video, that it didn't take me long to shape that nose and get it close. Use an 80 grit sandpaper. We're taking a lot of material off per swipe. And that's okay, when we get it close, we'll switch to uh, 150. Use your hands, because you can feel the highs and lows better with your hands than you can see them. <coughs> so now we're back to the... Uh, roll of sandpaper. This that I'm putting in here, this dashboard, is probably one of the hardest things to shape. And as I showed in the other video, it was cut on the bandsaw out of a block first. And then we're final sanding it for the shape we want. I'll cut a hole in this and then finish shaping it. And that will give us that nice dashboard that I have on the Monado. I'm not sure whether I have it on the Continental or not, but I've always liked that. Still a little high right there. Now, there's a few guys on the forum here that are body men. Mark Scarborough, beautiful painter. 
who knows exactly what I'm talking about when I say use your hand. Your eyes can't see it, but your hand will feel it. I'm more or less happy with that first go around. Our fuselage is at seven and a half ounces right now, but most of that is in this block, this top block, and we're going to cut that off and hollow this block out. So I'll be showing you from start to finish how much it weighed and how much we're going to end up with. We're going to hollow this block out to uh, 330 seconds. Now remember, we put stringers in this fuselage so that we could get some shape in the sides. So now we're going to switch to the 150 and I'm just going to hand sand it and get it close. I see a spot I don't like here. A little high. But time has not been doctored on this tape at all. What you see me sanding is what it's taken to take a square block into a, a roughed out uh, configuration. So I gotta change hands, change sides here. Okay, we're going to get my other, my soft block, because it's not going well. This is the soft block that I talk about. For sanding cars, you can get it at any auto paint store. We have 150 on it now. Then we'll go to 220. Yeah, I removed the vast amount of material now. And if I, if I continue to use 80 grit, you'll go too far. So, step down in the sandpaper so each swipe doesn't take a quarter inch off of it. It only takes a few thousandths off. And there's another thing about being able to build nice models and in a short amount of time is knowing the proper sandpaper grit and I can tell you all day long the only way you're going to get it is practice I, you know if I tell you one thing it's not always the same for the next airplane it depends on the the wood uh, how hard the wood is. If we were doing pine, we'd, you know, if this was pine or some type of hardwood, we'd still be sanding with 80 grit. But because it's balsa and it's soft, we dropped down to 150. So now we're going to check the basic shape. I just, I'm just holding the spinner up and looking down over the top. And I see that I have to come in a little bit right here still because it has a lump out there. And we'll hold it up on the side. And it still needs to come down a little bit right here. And th these are the final shaping things that you, you know, you have to do. And it will it will take several sandings to get it perfect and then when I get the spinner bolted on it you sand it right with the spinner on there 
so that you can make it perfect. And I'll show you that when I get to it. Back to 80 grit now to get, we needed to take quite a bit of material off there. take all day doing it. Now most of the time the nose it get, ends up getting some putty on it anyway. But you gotta try to do your woodwork with as tight of joints as you can make so you don't have to add putty. Because anytime you're adding putty you're adding weight. And glue, extra glue. So there you have it. That's how long it takes <coughs> to shape a nose that it's, you know, relatively close. Now, this up here around the uh, cockpit will take. We'll take some finessing, you know, we'll probably spend a few hours on that to make it look right. And I'm not going to run the camera for hours showing the detail on how to do this. Because that will absolutely bore you to death. Because I will have to put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. About a dozen times. So we're going to... We're going to get a hole here and just draw it on. This is where our pilot will sit. thinking about putting a backrest in for this guy too. Headrest, backrest type configuration right on the fuselage. Inside the uh, the other ones have an air tank on them and real airplanes don't have air tanks up there. I just basically did it to copy Tom when I built the Continental because that's how the original was. But we'll put some type of headrest, roll bar, or whatever. So now I've drawn the line around there. Just, just a basic outline. And uh, we'll start massaging this. This line to our basic line. Like I said, this will take hours to do. And I don't... I don't want to go through running the camera for hours just to get this on there so I'll show you that when I get it close. Because it's all a matter of sand, look at it, feel it. Yeah, I can see this is going to be a pain. Switch to 150 now because I don't want to dig down.
So that's that's what I'm working on right here. This spot right here. And this <clears throat> this line right here will go away in about two seconds. It'll take just a couple of swipes of the sanding block. And that's it. Remember I have those stringers in there so I can I can shape that fuselage pretty thin there and still have plenty of meat. So now we have a kind of a flat which is, I'm gonna have to glue this again because it's popping up. I was by the hobby shop today and I I didn't pick up the Teflon tubes. <laughs> so I have to make another run out there. basically how I do it. Of course then again the fillet will come right in there and be nice. I kind of have to think a few steps ahead. We're going to have the nice leading edge fillets on this too, then big I'm not even sure what to call them. They're like a chine. Those coffee can lid chines. I really like those. Yeah, it's added weight, but... It doesn't matter. I really like the looks of them. So, I'm going to cut the camera, and we'll be back when I get this all dialed in. So, see you in a bit.